Okay, so good morning everyone, ABM. Welcome to another episode of Discussion in Physical Science. Once again, my name is Wawi F. Falketen, your teacher in physical science. And today we will discuss the next lesson in physical science. And I hope that you are all prepared today. So, how's your day? Okay, so okay naman ba yung ating... Araw ngayon, and then kamusta naman yung ating quiz last time. So, I hope naman na nakamove ko na tayo doon sa scores. And then, bawi na lang ano, bawi na lang sa susunod. Okay, so today we will discuss the next lesson which is about Aristotelian, Galilean, and Newtonian concepts of motion. Okay, so in a shorter explanation or in a, or in a simple manner, we will discuss the different views of this following philosophers or scientists about the concepts of motion. Kung ano ba yung mga explanation nila na binigay about motion. So definitely, we will focus on the word motion today. Okay, so basta wag kakalimutan na si Aristotle. Galileo and Newton. Okay, so for the learning competency, compare and contrast the Aristotelian and Galilean conceptions of vertical motion, horizontal motion, and the projectile motion. Explain how Galileo inferred that objects in vacuum fall in uniform acceleration and that force is not necessary to retain horizontal motion. And then the third one, explain the subtle distinction between Newton's first law of motion or law of inertia and Galileo's assertion that force is not necessary to sustain horizontal motion. For the learning objectives, at the end of the lesson, the learner shall be able to explain the concepts of motion by Aristotle, Galileo, and Newton. For the second one, demonstrate concepts of motion by Aristotle, Galileo, and Newton. Okay, so correction lang. Okay, tang kita ko mali yung spelling ni Newton. Dapat capital N yun. Okay, for the third one, display interest in the process of understanding the connection between the various concepts of motion. Okay, so are you ready? Okay, so are you ready to listen? So, uh, everyone, I'm encouraging you to listen to stay focused, okay? So, let's start. Ayan. So, before we go on, of course, let us first define the word motion since this is the word or concept that we will talk about today. Okay. So, when we say motion as what you have read in your screen, it is the movement or the change in the location of an object over time. Okay. So, that's the definition of motion. Okay, so my question is, how can we say that an object is in motion? Paano ba na natin nasasabi na ang isang object is in motion? Okay, so analyze the definition. Nandun na din sa definition yung sagot, di ba? We can say that an object is in motion if the position or the location of the object changes. Kung nagbabago. Okay, next. Ayan, so... Um, as the title itself kanina, nakita natin Aristotelian, Galilean, Newtonian. Okay, so na-explain ko na naman, i-discuss natin or we will discuss the different views of these three scientists about motion. So, let's start with the views of Aristotle about motion. Ayan. So, Aristotle from 384 to 322 BC. So, who is Aristotle? He was a student of Plato and later became the tutor of the great Alexander. Ayan. So, siya po is a student siya ni Plato and after that, naging tutor din siya ni Alexander the Great. Aristotle made significant contributions to various fields of knowledge including philosophy, science, logic, and ethics. Lagi natin kakasulubong si Aristotle. Kahit dun sa first lesson natin ngayong fourth quarter na encounter natin si Aristotle. Okay? So, first lesson natin ng third quarter in physical science na encounter natin si Aristotle. Okay? ba? Lagi-lagi. Ang daming nagawa nitong si Aristotle. Ah. Na ito, ano? 
Okay, anyway, so much for that. Okay, so in addition, Aristotle's aim was to systematize existing knowledge. Okay, um, kung baga niya, parang gusto niya maging systematic yung mga uh, existing knowledge. Kaya nagpo-provide siya ng mga uh, other va information okay, to support that particular concept. Just as Euclid had, had systematized geometry. Okay, his systematic approach became the method from West, from which Western science arose. Okay, ayan. So, so much for that information about Aristotle. Okay, so how did Aristotle define the word motion in terms of an object? Paano kaya define Aristotle? So, hindi ko nalagyan ng animation. Ano? So, for Aristotle, every object has a proper place in the universe. Yun yung kanyang pinaka- uh, idea about motion that every object okay meron siyang particular place kumbaga is uh, for example if you throw a stone in the sky or in the air okay so sa tingin mo magstay ba yung stone doon di ba babagsak yan kumbaga ang sabi ni Aristotle yung stone na yan ang proper place niya ay sa ground okay which is towards the center of the earth. Okay. So, every object has a proper place in the universe. What does it mean? Okay. Ayan, sanabi ko na kanina na. A stone falling to the ground is considered a natural motion because it is moving towards its proper place, which is the center of the earth. Kumbaga, uh, yun yun. May natural place lahat ng objects dito sa mundo. Okay. Next. Ayan. Example, yung water and soil natin. Okay, yung proper place nila is towards the center of the earth. Okay. Which is in downward motion. Okay. Compare naman natin sa fire and air. Okay. So, it is an upward position. Pasaan yan? Okay. To the sky. Ayan. Pataas naman yung kanyang motion. Yun yung proper place niya. Okay, next. So, Aristotle classified motion into three categories. We have the natural motion, the violent motion, and the third one is celestial motion. Actually, in sa mga nababasa kong references, um, dalawa lang lagi yung kanilang nilalagay na categories okay, ng motion na binigay ni Aristotle. Yung natural and violent lang, lagi yung isinasali nila. Pero dun sa isa kong nabasa, may celestial motion na idinagdag siya. Kaya nilagay ko na lang din. So, let's discuss the three classification or categories of motion which is um, given by Aristotle. The first one, natural motion. Okay. It is known or thought to be either straight up or straight down. Yan yung natural motion. Okay. So, Paano ba yan? According to Aristotle, natural motion is inherent to objects based on their elemental composition. Okay? Kung nakabase daw yung natural motion ng mga objects based on their elemental composition, pag sinabi nating elemental composition, yan, ang ibig sabihin nito dito ni Aristotle, whether it is a liquid, a solid, or a gas, saan ba yung proper place na yan? He believed that each element had a natural place in the universe and that objects naturally move towards their proper place. For example, yung nabanggit ko kanina, the earth and the water. Pababayan talaga. Okay, towards the center of the earth. Okay, which is move in downward motion. And then, yung fire and air natin move in upward motion. Okay, so yung natural motion natin, Laging tatandaan, it is thought to be either straight up or straight down motion. Okay, next. Okay, doon sa idea niyang yon dito sa first one nat in natural motion, na-classify din niya, okay, or na-conclude niya that heavy things falls on the ground and very light things rises up in the sky. Bakit inasabi yun? Yung tubig, yung ating earth, or yung sa soil yan, Okay. So, um, yan is, what do you call this? Uh, mabigat when it comes to mass or weight. Ayan. So, 
pababa ang kanyang motion. Okay? Pag magaan naman daw, sabi ni Aristotle, very light, pataas yung motion or in upward. Okay? And aside from that, he thought that the speed of an object's fall was directly proportional to its weight. Okay? Pagbigat, pagbilis ng bagsak. Okay? Paggaan, pagbagal. Okay? Directly proportional eh. Ibig sabihin kung isa is pataas, pataas din yung isa or in similar way sila. Okay. So, yun yung konsepto ni Aristotle about motion or about um, natural motion. Next, violent motion naman tayo. Ito naman yung imposed motion or in horizontal motion. Huwag kakalimutan kanina ha, natural is either upward or downward. Okay, dito naman, horizontal motion. When we say violent motion, it refers the motion that is forced or imposed on an object. Kung baga, imposed, ano ba yun? In apply. It is considered unnatural because it goes against the object's natural tendency. For instance, for example, throwing a stone upward or pushing an object horizontally are example of violent motion. Okay, yun yung mga example. It was the result of forces that is pushed or pulled. Okay, yung ating violent motion. May additional pa rin yan. Yan yung result ng mga forces that is pushed or pu pulled. The violent motion. Pag liba, pag nagtutulak tayo ng cart. Okay, yan. Example din siya ng violent motion. Next, okay na ba tayo dito sa violent? Okay. Imposed motion. Yung ina-applied nating motion. Okay. Binibigay. Yung una, natural. Natural lang. Kahit wala tayong ilagay or ibigay na motion doon. Okay. Uh, kukusa siya. For example, yung tubig, kusang magpo-fall. Okay. Next. The celestial motion. Ito naman yung motion observed in the heavens or the celestial spheres. Okay, sabi dito ni Aristotle, Aristotle believed that celestial motion was different from the motion observed on earth. Ano yung mga motion na na-observe sa earth? Yung dalawang nabanggit natin na yung natural and then the violent. Pero sabi ni Aristotle, iba to. Okay, it is a motion observed in the heavens or the celestial sphere. While earthly objects were subject, subject to the four elements and ex exhibited natural or violent motion, Celestial bodies being composed of a fifth element called aether. Kung na alala natin doon sa first discussion natin sa first lesson ng third quarter, di ba si Aristotle yung nagsama-sama? Di ka na sabi ni Empedocles that matter, okay, came from the four fundamental elements: the fire, earth, air, and water. Okay, na sinuportahan ni Aristotle. Na nagdagdag lang siya ng pang fifth element which is the aether okay na i-recompose ng mga celestial uh, bodies okay so sabi dito being composed of a fifth element called aether had a unique type of motion he described this celestial motion paano niya describe as eternal uniform and perfect with the celestial bodies moving in perfect circles around the earth. Kumbaga may pagka-geocentric yung idea dito ni Aristotle. Okay. Kumbaga yung mga celestial objects nag-umiikot. Okay, in a perfect circles around the earth. The celestial motion. Okay. So dito wala pa po dito yung konsepto. Hindi pa nila naiisip yung konsepto ng gravity dito. Okay, next. Okay, one key aspect of Aristotle's understanding of motion was the belief that an object motion would naturally come to a stop if no force was continuously applied to it. He stated that objects had a natural state of rest and required a force to maintain motion. Paay natin yan e describe. Sabi dito ni Aristotle, pag tayo nagpagulong, for example, ng bola. Okay, para gumulong ng gumulong yung bola, kailangan may continuous force tayo na i-apply doon. Okay, kasi pag hindi tayo nag-apply continuously ng force, titigil yun. May tinatawag tayong natural rest dito. Okay, or the object's motion would naturally come to a stop. 
Okay, if no force was continuously applied. Okay. Yun yung konsepto niya. Okay, na para continuously gumulong, okay, or magkaroon ng motion yung isang object, kailangan may force na ina-apply. Okay. So, again, okay, I hope that you understand how Aristotle describes or uh, give his descriptions about motion. Okay, so next, let, let's proceed on the views of uh, Galileo Galilei. Sorry to tell you, pero may sipo na ako ha, kaya ako. Basta, so, ayan. Ayan, so, from 1564 to 642 AD. So, na naman natin dito kung magkaiba ba sila ng konsepto ni Aristotle. Okay, ang dami nating nabanggit kay Aristotle, di ba? Sabi ni Aristotle kanina, yung mabigat okay, na bagay, mababagsak. Okay, at yung magaan, aangat. Okay, and then, dinagdag pa niya, na pag mabigat ang isang object, mas mabilis yung kanyang pagbagsak. Pero pag magaan, okay, mas mabagal yung pagbagsak. Wherein, inassociate niya na ang speed and the mass or the weight of an object is directly proportional. Okay, so how about the concept or the views of Galileo Galilei about motion? Ayan, so before that, okay, kilalanin muna natin si Galileo. Ano, who is Galileo Galilei? Okay, he was an Italian physicist, mathematician, okay, astronomer, and philosopher. Okay, kung ba tatandaan natin sa first lesson natin si Galileo, siya yung nakapag-provide, diba, ng mga distinct observations na katulong kay Nicholas Copernicus. Okay, nagkaroon siya kasi ng mga extensive observation in the cosmos. Kasi nga, anong na-develop niya? The telescope. Okay, he is often referred to as the father of modern science and made significant contributions to various fields including physics, astronomy, and the scientific method. Isa pa to, ares ni Aristotle. Madami tong ambag sa science, kaya wag natin siyang kakalimutan. Ayan. Invented the telescope and made different discoveries. Though may mga other references na hindi daw talaga siya yung nakadiscovery ng telescope, siya lang yung nabigyan ng totally credit kasi nga siya naman talaga yung nakagawa ng magandang ano, no, version. Okay, so one of his most significant discoveries was the observation of the four largest moons of Jupiter. Ito yung pinaka-sikat niyang observation sa cosmos. Okay, known as the Galilean moons. Ano ba pangalan ng apat na moons na na-observe niya? Yung pinakamalaki, the Io, Europa, Ganymede, and the Callisto. Arte magbasaan. <laughs> Ayan, so next. So, Galileo was outspoken in his support of Copernicus. Kung kanina si Aristotel, at may, may, ano na tayo, ano, differences sa kanila. Si Aristotel, may pagka-geocentric, uh, yung kanyang idea, we're in, uh, yung mga celestial object according to the third category ng motion niya, celestial objects umiikot sa earth. Dito naman si Galileo outspoken in his support of Copernicus. Sino ba sa ogen si Copernicus? Siya yung nag-propose ng heliocentric model wherein the sun is the center of the solar system. Pakitandaan. Okay. So, one of the Galileo's great contributions to physics was demolishing the notion that a force is necessary to keep an object moving. Ito yung pinaka-greatest or one of the great, not the greatest, but one of the great okay, contributions ni Galileo. Kung baga, when we say demolish, nareject niya, dinemolish niya yung idea ni Aristotle about motion na para ang object ay tuloy-tuloy uh, yung uh, motion, may apply dapat tayong force na ginagawa constantly. Pero sabi ni Galileo, force is not, is not necessary to keep an object moving. Sinabi niya, okay, dito, or titingnan natin kung bakit niya nasabi or bakit niya na-reject yung, na-refute yung idea ni Aristotle about that. Okay, di ba? Again, babalikan natin si Aristotle. Ang sabi niya, para tuloy-tuloy daw yung gulong. Okay. O halimbawa, gulong na lang ng bola. Kailangan may 
uh, time to time, may ina-apply tayong force. Kasi pag wala daw tayong ina-apply dong force, okay, titigil yun. Okay, which is nareject ni Aristotle. Ah, ni Galileo rather. Okay, tingnan natin. Ni, uh, nareject ni Galileo. At titingnan natin doon kung bakit nareject ni Galileo yun. Okay. Yan. So, Galileo argued that an object, ito na, can move freely in the absence of friction. Kasi nga, hindi alam pa ni Aristotle yung word na friction. That's when friction is present. A force is needed to keep the object moving. Okay. So, sabi ni Galileo, kahit wala daw tayong force na inapplied sa isang moving body or in motion na object. Okay, yung object na yon tuloy-tuloy ang galaw. Okay, pero dapat absent si friction. Pag walang friction sa ating, uh, let's say, surface, okay, walang friction na makakasagabal uh, sa pag-move uh, ng object, tuloy-tuloy daw yung gulong, which is sinusuportahan ngayon ng science. Okay, kaya naman talaga nag-stop. Okay, or tumitigil pag tayo nagpagulong ng isang bola sa floor. Kaya ang titigil kasi may friction dyan. Pero pag tananggal natin yung friction force na yan. Okay, sabi ni Galileo, tuloy-tuloy ang gulong na yan. And yan ay forever gugulong. Okay, next. Ayan. So what is a friction? A friction is the force that acts between materials that touch as they move apart each other. It is caused by the irregularities in the surfaces of objects that are touching. Okay, so very elementary na naman na yun, yung friction force. Okay, so yung inyo pangalan, pag nagtatanong ako lagi, ano, pag nagtatanong baga ako sa aking mga student lagi, what is a friction? Ang laging sinasagot sa akin, kiskisan. Okay, <laughs> laging ganyan. Okay, so yan yung ating a force that acts between materials that touch as they move apart each other. Okay. So if friction is absent, excuse me, sabi ni Galileo, if friction is absent, pag wala si friction, a moving object would need no force whatever to remain in motion. Pag wala si friction, pag walang friction sa ating surface, kahit wala tayong i-apply dun sa gumagalaw na object, tuloy-tuloy ang galaw niyan. Okay, which is true. Okay, next. Ayan, so parang ako okay, dalawang dalawang na dalawang isip pa, which is true. Yun naman talaga is tunay. Okay, nasunod-supportahan din mga later ni Newton. Ayan. So, ito yung mga test na ginawa ni Galileo. Galileo tested this idea by rolling balls along plane surfaces tilted at different angles or an inclined plane. Yung first situation natin, a ball rolling down an inclined plane. Okay, ito yung first setup na ginawa ni Galileo. Okay, gumulong. In downward, Paba, pasaan yun? Yung ating ball, pababa, ba? Diba? Okay, the in downward motion. Okay, at yung speed, kung mapapansin natin, as the ball goes down, the speed of the ball increases. Okay, bumilis. Okay, which is tama naman. Observation niya. Okay, bakit kaya bumilis? Okay, yung speed ng ball. At bakit siya pababa yung motion, hindi pa taas? Okay, di ba? Hindi pa dati alam ni Galileo okay, yung konsepto ng gravity. But now, if I were going to ask you, bakit bumaba yung ball, gumulong pababa? Okay, bakit sobrang bilis? It's because the ball moves with Earth's gravity. May presence na ng gravity doon eh. Okay, pero dati hindi yan alam ni Galileo. Kasi yung gravity din, may introduce pa yan kay Isaac Newton later. Okay, so sa second setup naman ni Galileo, a ball rolling up an inclined. Kanina, yung opposite, tingnan natin o oh, kanina, pa-opposite. Kayo naman, pataas. Yung ball itatry in upward motion. Okay. At yung na-observe ni Galileo, habang pataas daw yung ball, the speed of the ball decreases. Why? Bakit naman daw nag-decrease? Kasi, the ball moves against Earth's gravity. Pero hindi niya yan, dinagdag yung explanation na yan, ha? Yung the ball moves against Earth's gravity, wala pa yan. Okay, sa so concept niyan. Dinagdag ko lang yan para mas magets gets ninyo kung bakit 
nag-decrease yung speed ng ball in upward motion in an inclined plane. Kasi may, yung ball nag-move against. Di ba ang gravity, a downward force. Ipasaan e, yung bola pataas. Opposite. Okay, kaya bumagal siya. May pumigil sa kanya. Next, letter C or set up 3. On a level plane or in horizontal. Okay, in straight path, ang sabi ni Galileo, speed of the ball decrease and stop from moving. Okay. Bakit to Miguel? Bakit to Miguel? Bakit yung speed ng ball sa ating horizontal is bumagal? Okay, and then to Miguel. Kasi ano yung meron? Ano nagpapatigal sa kanya? The friction. Very good. Ayan. Nakakasunod talaga. Ano? Ang galing-galing naman. Okay. The friction. May friction. Pero kung alisin natin si friction dyan, mababago ba yung explanation natin dun sa straight path? Of course. Ang magiging concept natin dyan sa straight path, kung walang friction, speed of the ball, or the speed of the ball, the ball moves in a constant speed. Okay. And move. Okay continuously or walang tigil. Hindi siya nag-stop. Kung walang friction. Okay? Pero dito may friction, so the speed of the ball decreases and stop from moving. Kaya nga dapat lagi tayo pag sa question uh, clear. Lagi. Kasi malilito ang bata. Ano? Next. Why did the ball stop? Bakit to Miguel? Galileo stated that if friction were entirely absent, a ball moving horizontally will move forever. Ayan. Pag wala nga si friction, yung bola, tuloy-tuloy ang gulong. Pero pag nandyan si friction, okay. Siyempre, titigil si bola. Okay. No push or pull would be required to keep it moving once it is set in motion. Pag walang friction. Okay. Pag walang friction sa floor, wala kahit wala ka ng applied na force doon sa moving object, tuloy-tuloy ang galaw niyan. Kahit yan ay abuti ng millennium Okay, until the end of the world, basta walang friction. Okay, tuloy-tuloy daw yung gagalaw. Okay, basta walang friction. Okay, next. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, aside from that, okay na tayo dun sa third setup niya. Punta naman tayo dun sa setup na ginawa niya. He also described two inclined planes facing each other. May dalawang inclined plane na magkarap. Ang unang ginawa ni Galileo, pinagulong niya yung kanyang bola. Yung inclined na magkara parehas ang equal. Okay, yung position, yung angle. Position, yan. Okay, equal in length, equal in angle. Pero yung sa akin, parang hindi. Okay, yung observation niya, the ball rolling down the inclined rolls up the opposite side and reaches its initial height. Okay, nung pinagulong niya, yung bola, okay, nakarating sa opposite side at na-reach na yung pinaka-initial height or yung peak niya. Okay, how about pag hindi parehas yung inclined? Yung isa is mas mataas yung angle. Okay, like this one. Ang observation naman dito ni Galileo, Galilei, the ball rolls a greater distance to reach its initial height. Tingnan natin yung sa may right side natin. Ang taas, di ba, nung, or mat, malaki yung angle. Parang pa na yan eh. Okay, so, nung pinagulong daw yung bola, it rolls in a greater distance and reach its initial height or yung peak. Kung baga, kung i-compare natin dun sa una, mas ito ay mas mabilis. Okay daw, yung pag-akyat. Next, letter C. If there is no friction, pag walang friction, the ball will never stop. Ayan, wala na natin, hindi na natin nakita. Gumulong na gong gumulong kasi wala nga friction. Okay, yun yung ina-observation ni Galileo. Galilei. Okay. So, only the friction will stop the ball from rolling. It was not the nature of the ball to come to rest as Aristotle had claimed. Okay. So, hindi yan. Hindi yung nature of ball na, yung, kumbaga yung explanation dito ni Aristotle is, kumbaga natural na sa isang bagay na mag-stop from moving pag wala ng force. Pero, hindi alam ni Aristotle na kaya tumigil yung isang object sa paggalaw or in motion, it's because may friction doon sa surface. Okay. Pero kung wala si friction, that particular object will continue to move. Okay. In addition, Galileo stated that this tendency of a moving body to keep moving is natural and that every material object resists changes to its state of motion. 
Okay. So, sabi ni Galilei, Galilei, tendency of moving ba to keep moving is natural. Natural lang sa isang object na gumalaw tuloy-tuloy kung walang friction. Okay. And that every material object resist changes to its state of motion. May capability ang bawat material to resist changes to its state of motion na naapektuhan ng iba't ibang factors like uh, friction, air resistance, and many more. Okay. And the ability of an object to resist change in motion is known as inertia. Okay. Yan yung property of the body to resist changes in motion. Okay, inertia, which is stated in the first law of motion by Sir Isaac Newton. Ayan, so before tayo mag-proceed kay Sir Isaac Newton, tingnan muna natin yung comparison between the idea of Aristotle and Galileo. Galilei. <laughs> Ayan. Ayan. So magbibigay ako dito ng situation, the first one, a ball rolling on the ground. Ano naman ang sasabihin dyan ni Aristotle? What do you think? Okay, ang sasabihin dyan ni Aristotle? The, the ball was naturally at rest and required an external force to set it in motion. Para gumalaw or gumulong yung bola, kailangan meron tayong external force na i-apply. Which is, tama siya doon. Alam nga naman, gumalaw na lang yung bola in, ano no, syempre papagalawin natin. Once the force was removed, the ball would eventually come to stop. Pag tinanggal mo na yung in-applied mo na force, hindi mo na sinustain, retigal daw. Okay, yung bola. Pero, Pag patuloy mong lalagyan ng force or nag apply ka doon sa bola, for example, ng force, hindi yun titigil sa paggalaw. Okay, which is hindi tinanggap ni Galileo. Ang sabi ni Galileo, Galilei believed that the ball would continue to roll at a constant speed forever if the absence of friction or any other external forces. Okay, hindi daw titigil ang pagulong ng bola kung walang friction. It will move forever. Okay. Yun yung idea ni Galileo. Okay. So, next situation. Falling objects naman. Ano naman yung kanina? Di ba sabi ni Aristotle, mas mabilis bumagsak ang mga mabibigat. Hmm. Di ba? Pero, ano kayang sasabihin dyan ni Aristotle? Believe that heavier objects fall faster than lighter objects and that the speed of an object fall was proportional to its weight. Pag mabigat yung object, mabilis. Pag magaan, mabagal ang bagsak. Okay. Ano naman yung sabi ni Galileo Galilei? Believe that all objects fall at the same rate regardless of their weight or size. Sabi niya ni Galileo, magkaiba naman, regardless of weight or size. Sabay, babagsak ang object without ano. Kung dito sa ating surface, may friction tayo. Ayon naman pag sa air. Meron tayong tinatawag na air resistance. Pag tinanggal natin si air resistance, sabi ni Galileo Galilei, regardless of your weight, kahit anong weight mo, mas mabigit kung ano-ano pa yan, sizes mo, sabay kayong babagsak. Okay. Which is true si Galileo Galilei. Pero pag, tinang, pag nilagay natin sa air resistance, syempre, may air resistance, talagang mas mauunang bumagsak yung mabigat kaysa dun sa magaan. Kasi may air resistance, pero alisin sa air resistance. Okay, yung kahit magaan yan, mabigat, sabay, babagsak. Okay, ilagay natin sa vacuum or in an empty space, walang air resistance, sabay yan babagsak. Okay, kahit ilang kilo pa yan, yung isa yung napakagaan. Okay, next. Okay, itong idea ni Galileo Galilei na ang mga objects ay sabay-sabay bumabagsak pag walang air resistance, ay kayo na-prove noong, noong 1971. Mas lalong na-prove pa pala. Okay, na-prove na yan ni Isaac, mas lalo lang na-prove. Okay, in 1971. The famous astronaut David Scott proved Galileo was correct in his famous hammer or feather drop experiment on the moon during the Apollo 15 mission. Okay, di ba sa moon wala namang air? Nag-experiment doon si David Scott. Pinag-compare ang hammer and feather. Sinong mas mabigat, di ba? Hammer, feather, magaan. Pero nung binagsak, sabay, bumagsak yung dalawa. Okay, na-prove niya na tama si Galileo Galilei. Pero pag nilagyan natin ng air resistance yon, anong unang babagsak? Of course, yung hammer. Okay. 
Next, since there is no air in the moon, the object trapped at the same speed. Okay. So next, the planetary motion. Ano naman yung views ni Aristotle about planetary motion? Believe that the planets move in circular orbits around the Earth with the Earth being the center of the universe. May pagka-geocentric kasi si Aristotle. Okay, and Galileo Galilei believed that planets orbited the sun and that the earth and other planets were in motion around the sun. Heliocentric naman si Galileo Galilei. Okay, so next. Ayan, so proceed na tayo. Okay na tayo sa comparison kay Galileo at Aristotle ha. Proceed na tayo kay okay, Sir Isaac Newton. In the year Galileo died, Isaac Newton was born. Tinanong, mali na naman yung spelling. Newton and capital N to mga anak, ha? Okay. So, sorry, nasa typo. Graphical error. Tao lang. Okay. So, by the age of 23, Newton gave the world his famous three laws of motion. Okay. So, di ba ang bata niya, ano? Okay, 23. Nakapag-ambag siya ng ganyan kagandang okay, konsepto. Okay. Together, Galileo and Newton discredited the Aristotelian view of motion. Pinagtulungan na. Okay, so, nireject na nga ni Galileo, Galileo yung idea ni Aristotle, mas lalo pang na-discredit nung dumating si Sir Isaac Newton. Okay, ito po yung na-propose ni Sir Isaac, the law of inertia, law of acceleration, and the law of action, reaction. But in our discussion, we will focus only on the law of Inertia. You will compare it to the context of motion or views of motion of Galileo Galilei. Ayan. So, in the first law of motion or law of inertia, Newton's first law of motion, also known as the law of inertia, states that an object at rest will stay at rest. And an object in motion will stay in motion with a constant velocity unless acted upon by an external force. Ito pa similar dun sa idea di ba, ni Galileo na ang object patuloy gugulong or magmumove pag walang friction. Okay. Pero dito kasi, tama na yung explanation ni Galileo. Itong concept lang na explanation na binigay ni Sir Isaac ay more detailed. Kasi yung binigay lang kanina ni Galileo, object in motion lang. Pero dito si Sir Isaac, an object at rest. Pati at rest. Okay. Sabi ni Sir Isaac, yung mga nakatigil na object will stay at rest forever kung hindi mo gagalawin or walang ia-apply the force or walang unbalanced force na magdi-disturb sa kanila okay same an object in motion will stay in motion with constant velocity unless acted upon by an external force yung mga object in motion sabi ni Sir Isaac continue moving kung walang friction walang or absent lahat ng factors na pwedeng or external or unbalanced force na pwedeng magpatigil sa kanya okay So, Galileo's assertion, on the other hand, emphasized that force is not necessary to sustain horizontal motion. Kung baga, diniscredit lang naman ni Galileo na hindi naman talaga kailangan ng force para masustain yung movement ng isang object. Okay? Kahit walang force, as long as the friction is absent, yung object gagalaw forever. Specifically, in the absence of any opposing forces like friction or air resistance. Okay, Newton's law focuses on the overall concept of inertia or the concept or it is a property of a body to resist in motion which encompasses both rest, nabanggit ko na, and motion while Galileo's assertion is specifically related to motion without the need for a force to maintain it. Okay, next, Newton's law applies to all objects in motion. Lahat, regardless of direction. Okay. While Galileo's assertion specifically address horizontal motion only. Paras naman tama. Okay, kung baga sa ano nga lang talaga. Tama naman yung explanation ni Galileo. Okay, yung kay Sir Isaac lang talaga kasi. Paulit-ulit ako, no? It's more detailed, more complex, mas maganda. Pinagandang version. Okay, Newton's law describes the equilibrium state of objects stating that they will maintain their current state until acted upon by external force. Okay. Paulit-ulit tayo, yung object na nakahinto or at rest, will stay at rest. Okay. Kung walang force or unbalanced force na i-apply. Yung object in motion will stay in motion kung walang mga unbalanced force around it. 
Okay. While Galileo's assertion highlights the absence of external influence required for horizontal motion to persist, na hindi kailangan ng object ng force to continue moving. Okay. Ang object gagalaw continuously kung walang friction sa surface. Okay. So, balikan natin yung mga situation na binigay natin kanina. Kanina, yung a ball rolling on the ground. Kunin naman natin yung idea ni Sir Isaac about that. Okay. For Sir Isaac, dun sa ball rolling on the ground, believe that the ball would continue to roll at a constant speed unless acted upon by an external force such as friction. He formulated the laws of motion to describe the behavior of objects in motion. Ayan. So, pinaganda nga lang ano, yung explanation ni Galileo ni Sir Isaac. Mas may mga dinagdag lang siya na konti. Okay, falling objects. Naman yung idea ni Sir Isaac. Believe that the force of gravity causes objects to fall towards the center of the earth and an at an accelerating rate, with the rate of acceleration being constant for all objects. Kanina, sabi ni Galileo, Galilei, regardless of your weight and sizes, as long as walang air resistance, sabay kayong babagsak. Which is, sinuportahan naman ni Sir Isaac. Kasi nga, lahat ng objects, pare-parehas ang acceleration or rate of acceleration. At ano yun? Ano ang rate of acceleration ng bawat objects? It is 9.8 meter per second square. The constant acceleration due to gravity. Okay. Kaya nasabi nila yan. Next, Newton believed that the planets move in an... Ito naman, yung sa planetary motion. Okay, sabi ni Newton believe that the planets move in an elliptical orbits around the sun and that the force of gravity was responsible for the motion of the planets. Actually, pinaganda nga lang talaga ni Sir Isaac. Ano? Kaya siya yung sikat isa trilos of motion. Next, ayan, so I hope that you learn something. You learn the different views of Aristotle, Galileo, and Newton about motion. So, to check if you really learned something, let's have a short quiz. Ayan. Okay. So, all you have to do is a type true or false test. Okay. Read each of the statements carefully. Write through if the statement is correct and false. If the statement is wrong. Answer in your notebook. So, let's try. Okay. So, pasagutan na lang ano sa notebook kung kaya. Malay nyo ito. Lumabas ito sa quiz. Lagi pa naman akong nagpapa-quiz. Lagi pa namang, mm -mm. okay, bawe-bawe din, ano, pag may time. Ayan, so number one. According to Galileo, heavier objects fall faster than lighter objects, lighter ones. Okay, so it is true or false. So you have five seconds to answer on beliefs. <laughs> okay, so it's true or false. Okay, very good. It is false. Okay, bakit false? Okay, so hindi yan idea ni Galileo, Galilei. Idea ni Aristotelian. Okay, so nakinig tayo. Next, number two. In the absence of air resistance, a dry cotton ball would fall faster than a stone. Yung magaan daw, yung cotton, mas mabilis daw babagsak kaysa sa stone. Okay, in the absence, ha, walang air resistance. Kung baga nasa vacuum, empty space. Okay, is true or false? Okay, correct. It is false. Ayan, bakit? Wala na nga res air resistance eh. So, pag walang air resistance, sabay, ba, bagsak. Pag may air resistance, sino yung mauuna? Of course, yung mabigat. Clear. Okay, bakit nga sabay, ba, bagsak? Kasi nga, para sila ng rate of acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meter per second squared. Okay, so next number three. In a vacuum, a feather falls faster than a metal ball. Parang parehas lang ng question number two. It is true or false? Of course, it's false. Nasa vacuum na nga, empty space A. Eh. So, walang air resistance. So, sub, regardless of your weight, size, sabay sila babagsak kung walang air resistance. Okay, next. In Galileo's experiment, he found out that the stepper, the inclined plane, the lesser is the acceleration. It is true or false? Okay, so the correct answer is false. Okay, but the lesser is the acceleration. Okay, so kung nakita naman natin kanina yung stepper, yung pangalawang setup, 
di ka greater nga yung paggulong eh, mabilis pa din. Okay, next. Five. One of Galileo's observation was that the maximum acceleration of the rolling ball was reached when the inclined plane was positioned vertically as if the ball was simply falling. Okay, ang haba, no? Okay, so, analyze natin yung question. One of Galileo's observation was that the maximum acceleration of the rolling ball was reached okay, when the inclined plane was positioned vertically. Naka-vertical, ha? Position. Ibig sabihin, di ba, pinaga, pinanggaling natin kanina dun sa left side, yung sa dalawang magkaharap na inclined. Yung isa ay nasa left, yung isa ay nasa right. Nung nakarating na sa my right side, okay, um, the ball was sim parang nahuhulog lang daw. Okay, when the inclined plane was positioned vertically, nung position pinagulong natin, parang nahulog lang daw yung bola, was simply falling, and then na-reach na yung uh, maximum height niya. Okay, so for this, it is true. Okay, next. According to Galileo, the ball would decrease in speed when rolling in a horizontal plane. How about when friction is present? Ito yung friction, ha? Friction ay present. So this is true. Okay, pag si friction ay present, talagang magde-decrease yung speed ng rolling uh, object or ball. Okay, in horizontal plane. Pero pag, sinabi ko dito, wala si friction. Okay, hindi magde-decrease yan. Continue moving yan. Na nakita naman natin doon sa pangalaw, pangatlong set up, doon sa pinakahuli. Okay, number seven. Law of inertia states that gravity is needed in order for a body to move. Kailangan ba natin ng gravity? Of course, it is false. Okay, so hindi na natin kailangan ng gravity okay so Galileo observed that a ball released down from an inclined plane will reach exactly the same as it simultaneous rolls up in another inclined plane okay true or false of course it is true na observe natin same height okay next according to Galileo a ball rolling in a horizontal plane would keep moving considering that the friction is neglected okay true or false so, walang friction Okay, according to Galileo, a ball rolling in horizontal, it would keep moving considering that friction is neglected. Tuloy ang galaw. Walang friction. It is, of course, true. Number 10, Galileo's assertion and Newton's inertia are similar. The only difference is the concept of force. Okay, it is true or false? Taparehas ba yung assertion ni Galileo at Newton about inertia? About sa motion? Yes, it is true. Okay, nagkaiba nga lang, may dinagdag lang si uh, Sir Isaac dito. Okay, about sa, yung sa first law of motion, diba? Uh, body at rest. Nakafocus siya sa at rest and in motion. Pero si Galileo, in motion lang talaga. Okay, it is true. Ayan. So, I hope that you learned something, ABM. And thank you again for this day. And good luck for the next quiz, next meeting. Okay, so thank you and God bless us all.